Honestly, my growing up was very fear-based. There were two separate messages. If I was ever alone, then somebody who was a bad person was going to get me. No one ever said, do these things to protect yourself. Instead, it was, we'll never leave you alone. So the other message was that you're the weak one, the one that needs to be taken care of, the one that needs protecting. In a fear-based home, I learned to not trust myself. It was hard to find safe spaces, not home, not school. In third grade, the other girls all wrote a letter and handed it to me. Who hates Beth? Sign here. They had all signed. It isn't hard to attack someone with no shell, no protection, nothing to save their own skin. It was an act of devaluing, confirmation of what I already felt and knew to be true. Ours was a domestic household. I was fed fear in my oatmeal. It felt like I couldn't live with my family anymore. I was in a pretty dark place. I'd spend most of my time thinking and believing I didn't really matter to the world. Spent a lot of time thinking of suicide. Glad I didn't do that. But I spent a lot of time thinking about it and felt like I had to leave. I had to get out. And yet, they were all I knew. I left everything I knew. Leaving my family at 17, seeking a safe space. I needed to support myself and decided to drop out of school. Devaluing myself. I wish I could have done it differently, but I don't think I could have. The steady hand of the law immobilized me by the throat, pressing firmly on the larynx and threatening my voice. My voice had been my lifeline, my identity. I was a storyteller, I was a talker, but the patriarchy would not let me speak. You don't speak. You don't speak unless you're spoken to. You don't talk about the family outside of the house. At my friend's house, everything looked so perfect. I thought, we look good when company is over too. So who knows what's happening behind closed doors? I returned home after seven years in exile, changing my name, seven years to keep my daughter safe. Returning to old names, the retching and coughing at night, a reminder of the unquiet times that sunk into my neck and my mind, looking and feeling like PTSD. How can you distinguish trauma from injury? Soft trauma from blunt trauma. Having regained my identity, I started telling my story. This time, I told everyone who would listen. I told the doctor, I told the nurses, everyone. In grad school, someone was stalking me. That's when I went to a pawn shop and bought my first gun. I felt safer with the gun under my pillow. One night, I saw someone behind the house and went outside, standing in my nightgown in the snow, I held my gun in the air so he could see it. He ran away. Women absolutely have a right to protect themselves. But what is a battered woman going to do? Will she be able to pull the trigger when she needs to? Or is she going to crumble and hand the gun over to her abuser? I've seen women invite their abusers back into their beds. I'm not saying they should not have guns but it will take a lot of practice. Should we have a gun because everybody else has a gun? Because that's how we feel. I know I do not feel comfortable that my father-in-law has a gun in his car. And if I came to your house and you had a gun sitting on your table, I will take my daughter and leave. No, I'm not coming back. If I had a gun in my house, it would be in 20 pieces so my daughter couldn't get a hold of it. If I needed to use it, I would never be able to get it back together in time. 
I started thinking I need to get a gun when I heard our neighbor shoot himself in the head. He was not the type of person I imagined would have a gun. If we're the only family that doesn't have one, how will I protect my family? You never know what someone else is capable of. I knew there was something wrong when I came home from work that day. The hair was standing up on the back of my neck. I always wondered what would have happened if I had had my gun that day. He had the gun against my temple, but he was so drunk he passed out and the gun went down. Now I'm preparing for anything. About every other week, I'll go through the house and when my son is napping, I will pie the corners of our house to make sure I know which way I'm stepping, what direction I'm shooting. I have to know what's beyond. If I have to shoot this way, I've got three neighbors down, two kids, I've got two kids here, two kids here. I really think about what would happen. So if somebody was coming up the stairs and we're in this room, how do I see them before they see me? And how do I shoot at them and incapacitate them without harming everyone else around? Sometimes a woman will come up to me at the store and thank me for teaching her how to shoot. How can you thank me for teaching you how to save your life? Most people see me and say, ah, she's a city girl. She's got her toes painted and her nails done and her hair done and her makeup on. And that's what I like people to perceive me as because they don't know what I'm capable of. And that keeps me safe. went back and forth and back and forth on it, but I thought, you know, I should just go get trained in this because I still have a love-hate relationship, a pretty fearful relationship. Even if I was able to defend myself and disarm someone and there was a gun lying there, I would probably be too intimidated to use it or pick it up. But if I really needed to, I needed to feel comfortable to do that. So I borrowed a gun and went and took a handgun training class. Having a gun made me feel nervous. And I have it in the holster and the safety is on and I have it locked in the glove compartment, but more fearful. I didn't like that feeling. So now that things are no longer at a fever pitch, I've taken it out and given it back. As a therapist, I've had a couple of women get guns, start carrying guns after the event, and it would scare them to have it around. Whereas doing self-defense training and going through the trauma work, many of them got rid of their guns because the gun was scary to them. So I think guns are overcompensation, whereas self-defense built the strength from the inside out. One of the truest values of self-defense classes, you kind of got to hear these other women's stories. You got to bond with them and you got to, I guess, put yourself out there and say, this is what I'm really scared of. And I think that's really empowering to just kind of admit, yes, this scares me so much. Like, now I can do something about it. I was raised under the belief that women weren't as important as men that men mattered more. And I think that created a huge vulnerability for me, that there was a hierarchy. Who comes first? Men come first. Men make better decisions than women. Men go out there and make the money, and women stay home and have children and are homemakers, and it's okay for you to be a doormat. I wanted my daughter to be empowered where I wasn't empowered in my teenage years. I wanted her to know how to say no, regardless if it was a family member or a stranger or whatever. And I wanted her to have the mental and physical ability to ward off unwelcome actions towards her. When I took self-defense, I went in there and I did it. And when I walked out on the other side, 
I was a completely different person, and it was not just a physical thing. It was a mental thing. I found out no matter what comes at me, I keep myself safe. That was the thing that I understood. I have the power to be my own protector, verbally, physically, spiritually, mentally, in every shape and form is what I realized. After taking self-defense, I was more confident. In the class, there was value and honor to oneself, less fear. I started venturing out by myself without overwhelming fear. I'm empowered enough to live the kind of life that I want. I found my fighting spirit, that I could in fact take care of myself, that I was stronger than I thought I was, that I had a voice and I could use it to protect myself, and that I could have boundaries. I don't think I had boundaries and what those look like. I don't think I knew what boundaries were. I instantly gained confidence. I felt more confident. I felt less afraid. My fear level went down significantly. I really changed. Creating a culture of empowerment training, you empower an entire culture to live life differently.